for being with us once again on the Marketplace. The news never stops here in the NBL's free agency period. We've got a lot of teams that have locked away a lot of pieces of the puzzle. And we went through that last week with Pete Hawley and looked at the depth charts, looked at the holes that some teams still have. And they're busy. They're very, very busy at the moment. I'm Jack Heverin alongside the best newsbreaker in Australian basketball, Olgan Ulich from ESPN. Olgan, let's start with Ben Eyre. He's been a name that a lot of teams have spoken about and a lot of fans have spoken about as well and said, who's signing this guy for next season? Well, he's got a home. He does. Ben Eyre has signed a two-year deal with the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. Uh, People were surprised when the Taipans didn't pick up his team option for for next season. Um, You know, the Taipans have plans elsewhere and so Ben Air hit the free agent market there was interest for, from a few teams uh, but you know his free agency sort of went down to the wire and they ended up being sort of his hometown team of the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix picking him up and I think he gives them sort of what they need off the bench which is a, a, an offensive punch and mm-hmm. some shooting you know we look at their ancillary guys and there isn't much shooting there and when you look at the way that team operates a lot of Mitch Creek and Alan Williams out of the post you want a shooter there and I, and I think Ben Air gives that piece to them. Is there anything that we read into that thinking that that may be trouble for Kyle Adnam in terms of a contract for next season? Yeah, I look around the league and the potential spots that exist for, for a player like Kyle Adnam, and I don't see one. Uh, the, the thinking from uh, decision makers around the league is that Adnam will more than likely not be in the NBL next season. Junior Madut was with the South East Melbourne Phoenix last season. He won't be for this upcoming season. He's going to be a jack jumper. He will be. Uh, The jack jumpers have had a a really slow pace with their free agency. Uh, They haven't got a lot of their priority guys. And so, you know, you know, they're focusing on, on, you know, who their next targets are. And and Junior Madut was one of those guys. He signed a one plus one deal that the second year of that deal is a mutual option. Um, And, you know, when we look at who the jack jumpers lost in free agency, you know, some of the rotation guys and Matt Kenyon, you know, Jared Weeks won't be returning. Isaac White went off to Brisbane. And so there is some room on, you know, in those guard and wing spots and mm. Junior Maduk comes in. And, you know, when you look at, you know, what they're trying to do that, you know, they want Milton Doyle back. And, and those talks are, are, will be continuing when his season at Tofash is done. Uh, they want an import point guard as well. And when you look at the backups, it's Sean McDonald, Anthony Drimmick. Uh, Clint Steindl, and, and then you have someone like Junior Madut there who showed some flashes as, as a three-point shooter and as a defender. And, and I think that, sort, that style of play can really fit what Scott Roth wants to do in Tasmania. He had a 50-piece a couple of weeks ago in NBL 1, just on Milton Doyle, because there'll be Jack Jumper fans who are watching this going, well, just give us an answer. Is, is our man coming back next season or not? You're saying that the, the, the answer isn't immediate. It's not immediate. It, it, it seems imminent, though. Uh, Doyle's season... Uh, in Turkey is nearly done Mm. and so um, once that season is done then the talks can reach an advanced stage I'm told that there is optimism from both sides this isn't just Tasmania you know gaslighting people this is everyone involved saying that this this is something that that there is interest in and so it wouldn't surprise me once Doyle's season finishes in Europe that a deal gets done relatively quickly Adelaide have announced another player to their roster, a local South Australian product, Keanu Rasmussen. Just tell us a little bit more. We don't often spend much time with great respect on the development players that are added to rosters, but this one in particular you wanted to talk about. Yeah, that's right. Rasmussen joins Adelaide, his hometown team, as a development player. Um, You know, he's a a, a 6'2 athletic guard, Um, you know, Played at the NBA Global Academy. We was at CBU for the past two seasons. Didn't get much minutes there. But you you can see flashes of what he is. He's he's currently playing in NBL 1 Central with Sturt averaging around 18 a game. And you can see flashes of of what he can do and what he can be. And I think what Adelaide is doing is really smart in putting impact potential impact guys in those DP spots. They already have Fraser Roxburgh, who if you watch any NBL 1 Central, is a really quality player and could probably make an impact in the NBL today if he had to. And so... We've seen over the past few years DP step up, whether it be because of injuries or other circumstances. And I think Adelaide is sort of loading their DP spots with guys who could potentially step in and make some sort of impact. And now, with that addition, they're loaded in the guard spots, aren't they, really? When you think about it, Mitch McCarron, Jason Kadee, we we have Rasmussen, as you mentioned as well. So in terms of ball handling, they're, they're pretty well set. They are, but they're also looking for another ball handler. You know, yeah. the, what I've been told this entire free agency is that they want an import point guard to put next to Mitch McCarron. Uh, and, you know, when you look at the remainder of that roster, it looks pretty set to basically put an import point guard and the other pieces will sort of just fall together after that. And so 
When you look at the, the creators on this team, it, it looks a lot different to last season where we saw a lot of Sunday Detch backup point guard minutes, which I don't think we're going to see a lot this season because you will have an import point guard, Mitch McCarron, Jason Kadi. You know, there are these pieces now and, and Adelaide is sort of is stacking up. I, I think their depth is quite underrated at this point. Taron Armstrong uh, was a name discussed on the marketplace. Pete Hawley flagged it last week on the show. Tasmanian product, and there was certainly a lot of interest from the Jack Jumpers, but he'll be playing up north with Adam Ford this season. Yeah, that's right. I'm told Taron Armstrong signed a, a two-year deal with the Cairns Taipans. Uh, he is, uh, you know, without hyperbole, one of the most exciting up-and-coming Australians. Uh, you know, 21 years old, played the last two seasons at CBU and really emerged as, you know, arguably the best passer in college basketball. Averaged, you know, around 11, 5 and 5 this past season as a sophomore at Cal Baptist. We thought he was going to transfer, but, you know, an opportunity at Cairns came up where, you know, the early understanding is that he may start for Adam Ford. Wow. Um, he may be the starting point guard for that team. And, you know, if you're uh, a, poten- a college player potentially looking at other schools to go to and a spot in the NBL opens up and you can play alongside, you know, you know, next stars. You look at what Josh Giddy did in Adelaide. You know, it, it really is a place where you can, you know, build your brand and your, you know, portfolio as a basketball player. And, and that's what Taryn Armstrong, you know, will get to do. And that's what Adam Ford has in probably, you know, one of the best up and coming point guards in Australia. They're young, the Taipans. There's no doubt about that. So where do things remain for them? Shannon Scott signed with the Brisbane Bullets last week. We just spoke about Ben Eyre won't be returning. He'll be going to South East Melbourne Phoenix. What else is Adam Ford looking for? And is anyone going to be over the age of 25 in this team? <laughs> well, look, the, the, the starting lineup, at least what I, I would project it as, is extremely young. You know, it's Taron Armstrong as a first-year guy. It would be Sam Menenga, potentially, as a first-year guy. Sam Wardenberg as a second-year guy. Paul Kowal as a third-year player. So it's a really young group. Um, you know, but that's the sort of group that I think Adam Ford gets the most out of. Mm. As far as what's next, you know, you look at that backup point guard spot. You know, they do want an import point guard to, to join the fold. And that'll be a player who more than likely comes off the bench and backs up Taron Armstrong. And so that's the priority for, for the Cairns Taipans right now because otherwise, you know, their, their roster is, is filling up really nicely. You know, Joan Antonio's back. Lat Mayen's back. They got a Calder Gack who's playing really, really well in the NBL 1 North. And so, you know, it's a young team. Uh, but, you know, the pieces are, are seemingly fitting together quite nicely. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how Cairns build out the remainder of that roster. Adam Ford, we know, is very, very good at finding diamonds in the rough. Olgan, as always, great to see you. We'll catch up very soon on the Marketplace. Thanks, Jack. And, of course, you can stay up to date with all of the latest NBL free agency news. Go to nbl.com.au, all of the NBL social media platforms. And until next time, we'll see you on the Marketplace.